Well, it's an interesting little verse we have here tonight to look at. A couple, actually, interesting verses. The verse from Thessalonians is an interesting um, depiction of praying without ceasing, making your whole life to be about prayer and conversation with God. But our gospel lesson starts out, Therefore, do not worry. Which makes me stop and think, what is the reason Jesus says, therefore? What was he just talking about prior to this, that he's now telling the disciples something else? So in order for us to really understand what Jesus is saying here, we have to know what he said before this. The story before this verse right here is the parable of the rich man with land, who has barn that isn't big enough to hold all of the crops that his land is bringing in. So what does he do? He tears down his barn and he builds a new one. But then he dies. So he doesn't need it anyway, right? So Jesus says, therefore, do not worry about what is to come. Right? That's the lesson the rich man sets up. The ends with, verse 21, so it is with those who store up treasures for themselves, but are not rich towards God. If we're not storing our treasures in God... What's going to happen? Jesus tells us and the disciples, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, or your body, what you will wear. Or should we just not worry about exercising either? I'm a little tired after exercising a lot this week, so maybe we should just give up on that and just not worry about that. Is that what this verse means? We'll get to that in a moment. Um, But how many of us worry about things? How many of you worry? You're in church, right? You can raise your hands. It's all good, right? We have we worry about this. Adults have life insurance, right? You want to make sure that things are taken care of. You have savings accounts. You have food at home in your cupboards and in your refrigerator, so that there's something there for you to eat. You have closets full of clothes and dressers full of clothes, right? And how many of us stand there, moment after moment, looking at those clothes every morning going, what in the world am I going to wear today? Right? And it's not just the kids that are making sure that they have the right fashion on, right? Or am I the only adult in the room that's going to admit that you actually stand there for a while and look at what you're going to wear? I wore these pants tonight for that particular reason. They're like this, the awfulest shade of orange you'd ever want to see. But, you know, who else can wear pants like this and get away with it? Right? You stand in front of your closet because you want to make a good impression on people. You have to wear the right thing, right? We try to tell our children it's not about what you wear, but we as adults do that exact same thing. We stand there in front of the closets and we go, I can't wear that because so-and-so is going to see me. And I, you know, they saw me in that two days ago, so I just, it's just wrong, right? Or am I the only one that does that? It's okay, I won't make you admit it. It's good, right? We shouldn't worry about these kind of things. But why shouldn't we worry? It's not just enough for Jesus to tell us all the time not to worry. It should be, but it's not. But Jesus is good enough that he gives us a reason. He says, don't worry about your life, what you're going to wear, what you're going to do. Because life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. He lays it out for you right there in verse 23. It's not even like he waits a moment. He just lays it right out. Life is more than food. And the clo- body is more than clothing, right? God feeds the raisin, the ravens, much to the chagrin of the farmers, right? For those of you that have raised crops, you don't want the ravens to come in and eat all your, all your crops. But God still feeds them. They don't sow, they don't reap. They don't do anything to get the food that they get, but God still makes sure that they get what they need to exist. They don't have any place to store anything. They don't have cupboards. They don't have refrigerators. They don't have barns. They don't have places to put their stuff. But do they have to worry about eating? No. God provides for them. What about the flowers of the field? They neither toil or spin, Jesus says. But yet if you stop and look at them, I know it's kind of hard for us to picture that right now, but in a month or two, let's hope, There'll be flowers out here, and you're going to stop, and you're going to stare at them, because it's going to be something you haven't seen in a while, and it's beautiful. And they don't, the flowers don't do anything to do that. God makes that happen. So why do we worry about what's going to happen? Why do we have to worry about it? If God can make the flowers come up and the birds have food to eat, don't you think he's going to take care of you? 
Jesus says that you are more valuable than the birds. Is God not going to take care of you? Why do we worry about this? And if we worry about something, does it change anything? When you worry about something, does it make it better? No, I'm the worst at this, really. When, when something's not going right, what, what goes through your mind, right? When you start to think about things, you think about all the things that could happen, right? Well, they could be in a ditch, or they could be, you know, you just start running through all the things in your mind of things that could have gone wrong. And nothing's happened. And even if it has happened, can, by you worrying about it, can you change anything that's happened? No. We can pray about it and try to ask God to do something in those kind of situations, but our worrying doesn't do anything. Our worrying, the only thing our worrying does do is it distracts us from focusing on what we need to focus on, which is God. So do not keep striving for the things that do not matter, Jesus says, right? He says, do not strive for what you will eat. Do not strive for what you will drink. As I said earlier, does that mean we shouldn't focus on these things? That we shouldn't worry about going to the grocery store or going out and buying food for our families or ourselves to eat? No, that's not what it means. Jesus isn't telling you to be a lazy bum and sit on your butt and have everybody bring stuff to you. That's not what Jesus is saying here. Jesus is saying that you still need to do those things, but you're not supposed to be focused on them. They're not supposed to be the all centrifugal point of your life. That's not supposed to be what your world revolves around. It's not the fact that you have the best clothes, or you have the best car, or you have the best house, or you're focused on getting those things. It's about looking where you need to be focused, and focused on the true prize that God is going to give to us. For we all know that where our heart is, there our treasure will be also. Right? Is that what it says? Where our heart is, our treasure will be there also. Is that what it says? Where our heart is, our treasure will be there also. I see a few people looking. That is not what it says. That is what we think it says, because that's what we always think is going to happen. People are going to start coming to church, and they're going to get their heart in the right place, and then their treasure is going to follow that. That's not what Jesus says at all. Jesus says where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Do you want to know how you can tell what somebody is focused on? Show me your checkbook. You let me look at your checkbook register and I'll tell you what your treasure is. I'll trade you too. You can look at mine. Right? Jesus doesn't say to get your heart right and then what you have is going to follow into God. Jesus is saying hand over what you treasure most to God and then your heart's going to follow right along. And yes, it's true. Money is not the biggest thing in some, thing. in some people's lives. It's not their treasure. But it's a good indication of where your treasure lies, if you can see where you're spending your money. So if you want to know what it is that you treasure, go back and look at the last three months of your checkbook and see where the majority of your money went. And that will help you see what you're focusing on and what the treasure is in your life. Right? For Jesus wants us to not have our hearts be right, but he really wants us to hand over everything in our lives and put it into God's hands. Because if you can take everything that you treasure and give it up to God, then your heart is really going to go right along with that. It's all about where our focus is. God doesn't expect us to be right, to get it right all the time. He knows who we are. He created us. And he knows that we are flesh-filled beings that are torn by being saints and sinners at the same time, wanting to follow him but being drawn away from what we know we should do by what we feel we have to do in this world. God knows who you are. He created you. All he wants you to do is give him everything. Hand it over and focus on Him. Not the things of this world that try to trap us. The money, the clothing, having the right phone, the right technology, the right cars, the right things, the right genes, the right whatever. It's not about that. If we can give Him our treasure, if you can hand Him over your treasure, then He is going to have your heart as well. And that's going to be where your focus lies. So don't worry about your life, what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what's going to happen two months from now. 
hand it over into God's hands and let Him be the one to give you everything that you need.